Joining us now in the studio is lawyer Jideo Logu to uh, speak on the happenings at the Supreme Court and what it means for everyone, legally speaking, uh, that is. We also have John in, joining us from our studio in Abuja, Shegun Shoumi, and he's a stalwart of the People's Democratic Party, as well as Kas Kasim Afegwa, a chieftain of the All Progressives Congress. Mr. Shoumi, Mr. Afegwa, we thank you very much for joining us on the program this morning. We also thank Jideo Logun, who is with us here in the studio. Thank you, too. Thanks again, gentlemen. We'll begin very ahead. Much with uh, Mr. Ologu, uh, uh, our lawyer, or the lawyer here with us in the studio. So regarding the Apex judgment, it, it was, some would say it was, you know, a 3 nil victory or a 2 nil victory, basically, you know, on two fronts. Now at the initial court and now at the Apex court. And so it, it, it was a double victory, so to speak, for uh, Bola Tinubu of the All Progressives Party, whose um, you know, presidential victory has now been affirmed on both counts. But for you, what stands out? You know, what stands out is that our jurisprudence, particularly electoral jurisprudence, is richer now. And I'm so happy that quite a number of citizens followed through because of the deep interest. And you must have heard the justices taking their time to rule out points that should be considered. Because when you talk about the law, the law is about facts, it's about issues, it's about law, it's about your evidence and how you marshal your case. And some make reference to technicality, but technicality is part of it all. There is a time for you to do this. If you don't do it that time, who bails you out? And that is why you need to be proactive when you are going ahead. I, I, I quite appreciate when uh, the Honorable Justice said that you come with a double-barreled <laughs> gun in this situation and you don't shoot one and keep one back. So you come fully. And that is a way of saying that we need to pay more critical attention to how we drive these processes. And speaking strictly, since 1963, when we became a republic, Supreme Court became the highest court in the land. So after Supreme Court, everybody should just calm down and probably wait for the next elections. And I want to say, in agreement with you, that this is a double uh, victory for the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Ashwajibola Mechinubu, judicially speaking, and three dimensional victories at the poll, at the tribunal, and the Supreme Court. And he has called to uh, the other stakeholders to join hands with him to move Nigeria forward. And I want to say that now we have strengthened democracy in Nigeria because uh, the Labour Party, APM, and PDP, and others could have chosen, like, the former president of Nigeria, good luck, Ebele Jonathan, did in 2015. And no, I won't go to court to say we are not going to do this. But now we are more enlightened. Mm. Look at the case of the status of the federal capital territory. It was like a titan status. But now it's been clarified again that no, it's just, you know, like an addition to the 36 states we have in the country. So my advocacy is that the National Assembly should now study the findings and the conclusions from the Tribunal and the Supreme Court and fine-tune our laws. You know, Section 4 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999, as amended, says that the National Assembly shall make laws for the peace, the orderliness, and good governance of Nigeria. So which laws must we state clearly? So which direction do we want to move? Because one of the points I was raising frantically came to the fore also in the Supreme Court, which is that INEC has some discretions right. that you cannot take away from INEC, mm -hmm. you know, even from the pages of our laws. So how do we go forward to ensure that some of the gaps we have observed are not uh, repeated in subsequent elections? So All right.